granito de mostaza. Eso lo dice el Señor. Liberaste tu granito de mostaza. Eso lo dice el Señor. Tú le dirías a esa montaña. I don't know how it's going to come out. I'm going to preach my guts out tonight, okay? So I, I hope that's okay. <laughs> Amen. I'm not mad at nobody, so don't go there. Amen. But I do think that there's something we can learn so that way we don't fall under this sort of attack by any means necessary. In Jesus' name. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, I'm going to be reading in Acts chapter 9. Excuse me, Acts chapter 8. Book of Acts, chapter 8, turn there in your Bibles, in verse number 9. Acts, chapter 8, in verse number 9. And when you got it, say amen. All right. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery. Somebody say sorcery. And bewitched the people of Samaria giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. Can we pray? Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for your word. I thank you for what you have shown me. God, help me so much, Lord, to minister it the way you want me to, oh God. Lord, nothing more, nothing less. Help me, God, to preach, to teach whatever it is that the Spirit is bidding. God, I want to follow it, oh Lord Jesus. Open up our hearts, our minds, our souls to receive your word and apply it to our life, oh God, and bring forth fruit unto your glory in Jesus' name. Everyone say in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Amen. All right, if you got notes, take notes, highlight. I I don't know how fast or slow I'll be going, but while you can, please do do so. I'm going to be preaching to you on this topic today and and making some things of notice, and I pray that you would apply it to your life, like I said in the beginning, that you won't fall victim of what the enemy would try to do to the church. Amen? Amen. Today, I'm going to preach on the spirit of manipulation. The spirit of manipulation. Amen. So let's first, where do I get manipulation from? So let's break it down a little bit. And I believe it's going to blow your mind. Verse number nine there of our text says there was a man named Simon, which before time in the same city, he used sorcery. And I began to look up this word as God dealt with me about this term sorcery. We all begin to think magic. We all begin to think spells. We all begin to think uh, some witch of some sort. Amen. But Simon was none of, this, none of those things at all. Amen. He was none of those things at all. Amen. That the Bible called it sorcery still. That's amazing to me, church, that that's a new revelation that opens up my eyes that the scriptures would call such a man. He used sorcery. I looked up the term sorcery in the Greek and I was amazed at the times that it's used. It comes from the Greek word magos or magi. Anybody ever heard of that term magi? Amen. In Matthew chapter 2, the Magi came, amen, to bring gifts unto Jesus. They were also known as the wise men. The Magi is the same term used to describe Simon in the book of Acts chapter number 8 who used sorcery. Amen. He was part of the same Magi or from the same country or amen area that the Magi or wise men were from that brought gifts unto Jesus. And everybody called them wise men. And the Bible says that through his sorcery, through his wisdom. He bewitched the people. He influenced them. He attracted them. He charmed them by his words and convinced them that he was some great thing that he actually wasn't. Wow. That blows my mind. Amen. Because it was only used these other times. Amen. In which it pertained to the wise men that came to Jesus. And everybody talks about the wise men. They love these men. 
Amen. They, oh, these, these men were smart. They were wise. They had great words. But when it talks about Simon, nobody liked him because they thought that he was performing spells on the people. No, he wasn't performing spells. He was charming them. He was bewitching them with words. He was manipulating them. Amen. And he had done so for such a long time. Amen. That he had convinced them that he was this great somebody. Like he had this great reputation and the power of God was, so to speak, upon him. But when the real men of God showed up, amen, all of a sudden people were being filled with the real power of God, the Holy Ghost, amen, in which this man could not perform. Even if he talked about God, maybe he did it well. Maybe he preached it well. Maybe he, I don't know what he did with his hands or with his gestures. Amen. But no one was filled with the Holy Ghost by this great wise man who bewitched the people and who claimed to have a great reputation. If you notice in the scriptures, nobody talked about his reputation but himself. That's what manipulation does. It wants to convince everybody that they're this great somebody in God. And there's no fruit. And what do they do? They influence and they attract and they charm. Amen. For a long time. And he used trickery with his words. Amen. And when someone does this, when someone has this, and there are some characteristics that should be noticed about a spirit of manipulation. Amen. And it will fall upon people. It will use people against you and I. Amen. To get its way. Why? To get our minds off the plan of God. To get our minds off the will of God. To get our minds off what God wants to do with you. And to fulfill and serve your purpose in the kingdom of God. If they're really about God, they'll never, ever try to distract you from God's plan for you. They'll never try to convince you to do something else that's the will of God for your life. They will never go against the man of God that God has put over your life. The word manipulation, I looked it up in Webster's Dictionary. It means to control or play by artful, unfair, insidious means, especially to one's own advantage, being used and manipulated by knowing men around them. They do it for their own advantage. They appease you with stuff, amen, so they can have power or control over you. The Bible called it sorcery. Let's talk about some characteristics now. There are some characteristics that we should be able to notice. Amen. When someone is being uh, run, fooled, or being used by a spirit of manipulation. Number one, they have to convince everyone how great they are. Come on now. No one's getting the Holy Ghost, but they're used of God. No one's getting baptized, but they're used of God. Come on now. I'm going to talk to you about, I don't care how many people preach on YouTube and say this and say that. I don't care how many Bible studies they teach. I don't care where they go and how much scriptures they can quote. And that means nothing to me. And then where's the fruit? Where's the consistency? Amen. If I'm somebody of God, everyone else will tell somebody. I don't got to tell nobody. And my reputation will be heard not only here, but across the land. I never got to knock on the door and ask someone to preach. I've never got to call somebody and ask them for an invitation. No, God will open every door for me. Amen. And I step through it when God opens the door. Number two, they've been doing this a long time. They're not new to this. A spirit of manipulation has been there a long time. Amen. And they've gotten good at it. It's there so long they don't even know it's there. It's because it's everything to my advantage, not yours. It's what's in it for me that I should do this for you. Woo! Look at verse number 11. It said he'd been doing this a long time. He'd been doing this a long time. Number three, they got troubles with money, especially tithing correctly. There's a lot of people say that they're used of God, that they're this of God, that they're that of God. They can quote this, do that, do this, but don't pay tithes, don't give tithes, don't share the offerings, amen, don't do none of that, don't bless the people, come on, amen, unless it's to their advantage, amen, and when it stops being an advantage, amen, they'll pack up their stuff and they'll leave out of there and don't think that they won't do it to you too. If somebody's really of God, they'll tithe. I don't care if they're a pastor, a bishop, a prophet. It don't matter. Amen. God's principles are for everybody. 
You want to know, I don't care if they come up to you in the middle of nowhere and they prophesy and they can tell you good stuff about your family. There's no way he could have known that except he was a prophet. Amen. Tell him, will you stop prophesying? Who's your pastor? Who do you give tithes to? And do you give it correctly? Do you give all of it or just a portion of it? Do you give it all the time or just when you feel like it? Amen, because I'm not going to let some thief come talk over me in my life. Amen, if you rob God, you'll rob me. And I don't want nothing to do with that spirit of manipulation. Amen. Troubles with money. They're not consistent. Poisoned with bitterness. Look at verse number 23. Let's jump down there in our text. Amen. When this man, he was even, he became a believer because he saw what the real men of God can do. And he wanted to do that as well. And he offered Peter money for the gifts of God. Peter looked at him and said, thy gift perish with thee. Your money perish with you. Think that the gift of God can be purchased with money. I don't think so. Troubles with money. Simon had troubles with money. Yes, he did. Because he wanted the power that when he laid hands, that they would receive the Holy Ghost. There's a lot of people laying hands these days, but no power of the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. When a real man of God is sensitive and knows when the Holy Ghost is about to move, he ain't even got to touch him. Amen. He could just reach and bam, you'll see it here. Y'all, some of y'all, y'all seen me. Amen. I, I, I wait for the Holy Ghost. I, I watch for the Holy Ghost because if the Holy Ghost ain't in it, I ain't laying hands. You can say this and say that and say this. Where's the power? Where's the fruit? Where's the evidence? Amen. Amen. But Peter said unto them, thy money perish with thee. Amen. Because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. People who are, who are ran by a spirit of manipulation, amen, deal with bitterness all the time. They're bitter with people. They're bitter with family members. They're bitter with the church. They're bitter with everything. It's like nothing pleases them. It's like nothing makes them happy. It's like they complain about everything. It's like nothing's right. Amen. Then there's a spirit of manipulation. Woo. They're poisoned with bitterness. Their heart's not right with God. Facebook Christians is what I like to call them. The word bitter, I looked it up, amen, so I could get a better understanding of what it means. It means accompanied, listen to this, it means sour, accompanied also by severe pain or suffering in the body. Oh, my God. Being relentlessly determined, exhibiting intense animosity towards enemies, harshly reproachful and full of complaints. That's what a spirit of manipulation, those are the characteristics of one that has it. And you better be careful who you are. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are. I don't care who's around you. You better be careful because there's a spirit of manipulation out to attack people in the church. And you got too many voices in your life. You got too many instructionals in your life. You got too many people wanting to be the pastor in your life. And you better eliminate that junk. I'm the only one that God has called over you. I'm the only one that God has called to prophesy over you. And I don't do it for my advantage. It's always for the kingdom. If I give you something, I never ask for it back. Amen. If I did it, I did it out of love. Amen. Amen. And when you did wrong, I didn't throw it in your face. Amen. That's what a spirit of manipulation does. It throws it in your face when you're wrong. Amen. And it wants to prove how much they're right and you're wrong. Amen. It wants to dictate everybody else's life, but not get their own right. You better hear me today. God has given me this. I know from heaven without a doubt in my mind as a warning unto somebody. Amen. And whoever's not here, I want all of you to text them and tell them you better listen to the podcast because God has a warning. Amen. And some of you are being manipulated. Some of you are trying to be dictated and controlled by something that's not of God. Amen. 
You see, if they're sincere and they love you, they won't throw it in your face later because they get mad. Or mention how much you owe them now. Because they're going to want you to make the payment. They're going to want you to pay the debt. They're going to want you to fulfill. You see, when you fall into, amen, playing games with a spirit of manipulation, you'll start to make promises that you really can't keep. You'll start to say things, amen, that you really didn't mean to do. Amen, and sooner or later, it'll come back to you. Amen, and it'll want payment. And now you're struggling with the plan of God or doing what you promised to do unto this thing. Here's the difference. The blessings that really come from God that are really him, I couldn't afford to give to you even if I wanted to. But God gave it to you. I spoke it. I prayed for it. Amen. And God blessed you with it. And nobody and nothing and nothing could take it back from you. I didn't demand conditions or reservations. It was, come on, let's pray together and let's believe God. And who knows if God won't pour out a blessing. You've heard me. Who knows if God won't pour out a blessing. And then why not try? But I never told you no when you needed a prayer. I never told you no when you needed something, especially in your family members. Amen. Because it wasn't to my advantage. It didn't matter. It was for the kingdom. It was for the kingdom. It was for his glory. It was for his purpose. Amen. And that's what it should always be about. This has nothing to do with me. I spoke it and it came to pass and only God can do that. Praise the name of Jesus. And what I've always asked as a pastor, as a man of God, as your leader, I've asked from the same thing as from everyone. Amen. And so it's not me picking on anybody because I've demanded the same from every individual, from adult, teenager, from child. You know that. You know that. Amen. I don't have fear. I don't have favoritism. Amen. Some of you thought I had favoritism until I sat people down, until I rebuked them, until you saw, oh my God, come on. Amen. And so you know, amen, that I'm not here to manipulate people. I'm here to see your soul saved. I'm here to tell you the truth. Amen. I'm going to preach whether this house is full or empty. Makes no difference to me. There's too many voices in some of your lives. God wants to send you a warning. You better be careful not to attain to too many voices in your life. Amen. God has given you a pastor. Amen. And you better stop keeping secrets. If you've got a situation, you need advice. You're supposed to come to me. First Corinthians chapter 11. In verse number one, Paul told the church, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remembered me in all things and kept the ordinances. Why did Paul say for them to remember him in all things? Because he was their man of God. When you're dealt by a spirit of manipulation, you got no time for the pastor. You got no time for the church. It's for everybody else. And the church gets put on the back burner. Amen. And the pastor gets put on the back burner. The only time they need them is when tragedy takes place. It's when they need a prayer answered. And situations come up that are out of your hands. It wants to convince you that there's something that they're not. And it can Anybody, it can be anybody from anywhere. And let me tell somebody, it can be family members. It can be loved ones. It can be boyfriend, girlfriend. It can be a wife, a husband. Amen, it could be a cousin, an aunt, an uncle, a grandchild. I don't care. They have no desire to change. They take no notice of wrongdoing. They feel like everything is well. Tell everybody else what to do, but can't be told what to do. Making you a servant to them and hate you because you serve God and you do it elsewhere. That's a spirit of manipulation. And I'm calling it out today. And if you are giving heed to these things, shame on you. And you better repent of that junk. You better close the deaf ear to that and turn away from it. You may be seated. In the prison systems, in our prison ministry, whenever we go for prison orientation and prison training, one of the main things that they teach you is don't make friends with everybody, assume nothing, and not everything is as it seems. They said because many of these people in here 
are masters of manipulation. And they tell you that in the training. They said, be careful who you get close to. Don't deal with one single person all the time. And they said, because as soon as they see, amen, that, that, that you are going to accept their smiles and their friendship, amen, and they'll do little favors for you. And then they'll see if you'll do a little favor for them, amen, and those favors become, those little favors become big favors. And the next thing that you know, they seek to entrap you. And so many have fallen victim to manipulation in the prison ministries. Amen. People have fallen into relationships. People have done it, amen, illegally and wrong. Amen. And found themselves, amen, lost their job, lost their careers, lost everything because somebody manipulated them. And as soon as they know that they got them, all of a sudden a change takes place in their character. And they're not nice anymore. Now they're demanding. Now they're eager. Their, 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 their demeanors are all different. They're mean. They're angry. They're bitter. And they point and they demand Amen. That's a spirit of manipulation. And they teach you about it. And they'll trap you in situations. Why? Because you done made promises now. You got so wrapped up and involved that it's like you can't even turn back because you you don't want to lose all this stuff now. Let me tell you something. I'd rather lose everything and still have God. I'd rather just put it all to the side and still be right with God and keep my position and keep my purpose and do what's right. I'd rather throw it all away and start fresh with God. Amen. Then to keep these things and keep this and keep that and keep this just to please people. I'm not here to please people. And they'll demand their payment. Sometimes even use blackmail, take advantage of you. They want you to do everything while they do nothing. And they call it love. That's not love. When God's trying to change you and God's trying to call you and God's trying to minister to you and bring good things to your life. Amen. Let me tell you something. God don't need people. Huh? Y- y'all seen it. You seen it. I prayed. I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, and prayed for church vans. Never spent the dollar. Three show up. Don't tell me God can't provide a car. Amen. I've seen God provide a job. Amen. Don't tell me God can't provide a job. If you serve God and give your tithes, how many times have we testified that God will pay the light bill for three months at a time? How many times have we testified that God will pay the rent over and over again? How many times have we testified that God has come through? Why do you think you need people unless you've been manipulated? Why do you think you need this one or that one unless you've been manipulated? Amen. I want to tell you right now. As long as I got God, I've got the majority. I've got the advantage. And no one, no one can take the advantage over me. Well, you don't understand. I got to help them. Well, don't you trust God enough to help them? Maybe by your actions, you're saying that I've got to do it. Because if I don't do it, God's not going to do it. You're getting in the way of God now. And now you're trying to manipulate him and his plan. You better be careful. God will move you out the way. You see, there's some people in this church that's been out of this church and fallen out of this church. Amen. That I've been praying that the hand of God would show up in their life so that that way they can learn. So that that way they can begin to cry out for God on their own. But when you begin to interfere because you think you got to be God and you got to be the helper, then maybe you've been manipulated and now you're trying to manipulate others yourself because that's what it does it tag teams itself amen it multiplies itself do you trust God do you trust God then let God fix them let God deal with them let God do it if I'm walking with God they'll hate me for it if I'm really fulfilling the will of God he's they won't even like me unless I've been manipulated If I've been manipulated, then I'm falling into all kinds of traps, and I don't know how to get out now. I don't know how to get out. I don't know how to say no. I don't know how to turn a deaf ear. I don't know what's right and wrong anymore. Amen. I got this one saying this, this one saying that, this one. I don't even know what to do. And really, you're supposed to only listen to God and the man of God. What you mean you don't know what to do? What you mean you don't know what answer to listen to? What you mean? 
I'm here to eliminate excuses. I'm here to point out this spirit. Amen. I want to warn the church. Amen. If you're being manipulated by a spirit, amen, then you better rid that thing. Amen. Whoever it's being used by, I don't care. You better rid yourself of that. Separate yourself from them that won't follow God. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that. Well, see, I refuse to let that spirit come in here and try to tell me how to preach. Try to tell me how to act and how to do this and how to do that. Amen. That spirit tried to come in here before and say, don't you sit them down. They'll leave. Pfft, sit down. Amen. This is ran by the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit of God. Amen. It's not even run by me because when the Spirit takes over, I put the microphone down. When the Spirit takes over, I let him have his way. Amen. And if I'm wrong, the Holy Ghost will tell me I'm wrong. Amen. But I want you to know something. Amen. Either we're going to follow God. Amen. Or we're going to be deceived and we're going to fall out of this church. Amen. But Adam prophesied it already. He saw tornadoes about the church. And the only ones that were safe were those that stayed in the church. Amen. That spirit of manipulation will rip you away so fast like a tornado. It'll grab you, and before you know it, you're gone, you're out of here, and you're scattered here and there. James chapter 1, verse number 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. That word enticed means entrapped. You've been manipulated. The enemy knew you wanted this, needed this, asked for this, or appeased by this, and so used somebody to entice you with it. Let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost ain't going to give you something to put you in debt. The Holy Ghost ain't going to give you something to entrap you, and you can't get out of it later. You better hear me. Don't you know that the devil can bless you too? Yes, he can. The devil can give you stuff too, and we'll call it God, and we'll call it thank you, Jesus. Amen. And God didn't have nothing to do with it. Then, when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, it brings forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Beware, because there's a spirit of manipulation trying to entice some of you. Don't leave. Stay here with me just a little bit longer. Don't go to church. We can do this. Well, don't listen to him. You should do this. Don't do that. You should do this. Hear me, not them. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll give you this and all this. And later on, throw it in your face because you didn't fulfill certain things, certain expectations. That's not love. That's not how God gives. God gives you something, he gives it to you. Wholeheartedly. I seen God give stuff to people that didn't deserve it. Blows my mind. And I said, my God, that's God. That's God. See, people, we, we put expectations and limitations and this and that and rules and regulations and conditions and reservations. And if you better, you won't. I'll take it back. Then it wasn't mine and it wasn't God that gave it to me. Then take it. Amen. That's what you ought to say. Some of you ought to, some of you need to start getting a backbone. Amen. And start telling people no. And start telling people the truth. And start standing up for God. Start standing up for your church. Amen. See, I ain't on Facebook. I ain't on Instagram. I ain't on Twitter. I don't look at none of this or that. I ain't talking to who's who, what's what. I don't do none of that. I pray and God tells me what to preach. Take it up with God if you want to get mad. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. People want us to do this and do that, and they call it love. That ain't love. Don't go to church. Stay with me. That ain't love. Manipulation. Well, don't do like that. Why you dress like that for? Don't dress like, dress like this. Manipulation. Because they want to take advantage somewhere, somewhere, somehow. Hey, well, I want to change. Well, then you're going to change without me. If you change, I'm leaving. No, 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 don't leave, no, no. I'll, I'll do whatever you want. I'll stay, I'll stay. Manipulation. Oh, it's quiet now. 
Simon bewitched the entire city of Samaria. He had been there so long manipulating everybody and has so many people convinced he was this great something. The scripture says he even convinced them that he was the power of God himself. Not that he had power, that he was the power. But when real men of God showed up, you hear me? When real men of God showed up, he got rebuked. <laughs> ha! Hey, you hear that? You hear that? You hear that? A real man of God, he'll stand his ground and rebuke the people if that's what he's got to do. A real man of God, amen, ain't afraid to tell people the truth. I ain't got nothing to gain. I've got everything to lose. Amen. So what? I'm going to tell you the truth because I really love you and I really want you to go to heaven. Not greedy of gain. Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. I'm satisfied with where I'm at. And I've got God and the Holy Ghost in my heart. Guess what? I'm content. I've got great gain in my spirit. And that's why I got favor wherever I go. And that's why I, you see vans. You see this. You see that. And I ain't got no money for it. But God provides it every time. But there's a spirit of manipulation trying to entice some of you. Amen. And then what happens? You lose your convictions. Let me just talk about some issues. Let me just go ahead and get out there. I'm already all up in it. We'll lose our convictions. Don't bother me to show up late. Don't bother me to miss church. Don't bother me to wake up for prayer. I stopped doing this. I stopped doing that. Next thing you know, it don't bother me no more. What do you come to church for? Is it really because you've got a relationship with God or you're scared that uh, you, you're going to be put on the spot? Well, I've got to maintain this responsibility. Is it really for responsibility or is it because of relationship? Amen. It's supposed to be for relationship. Amen. You see, when it's for my relationship, it's no longer a chore for me. I do it because I love them. Amen. I do it because I love them. Amen. I don't, I don't think when I'm at home, oh, God, I got to do this. Oh, God, I got to do that because my wife, she's going to come home and beat me up or no, I do it because I love her. And there's some things I ask her to do, and she does it because she loves me. Not because I'm looking to gain something over her or take advantage of her later on. And I don't ever do nothing in return. Come on now. I'm talking about it. She ain't got to pay for it. It's free. Praise God. That's real, out of real love. Out of real love. She ain't got to ask me for it. Oh, my Lord. My Lord Jesus. We get quiet during the preaching. When you used to be loud, you used to be shouting, you used to get behind it. Amen. But maybe there's too many voices in your life. Amen. Maybe there's people talking trash and doing this and, and putting all this negative seed in you. And so now during the preaching, you got quiet and now you don't know what to say because you don't know who to say what to now. Amen. When I've been there for you time and time and time and time, I prayed for you time and time. And I've had compassion and I've had mercy. Amen. Even though you messed up and did this and didn't do that. You didn't remember me in all things. And I still loved you. I still prayed for you. I still sought God for you. I still went out of my way for you. And never asked for anything back. And never threw it in your face when you did wrong. Oh no, that because that's real love. And God wants to show you real love here. But whom he loveth, he will correct. I already only get just a little bit per month. We got a van payment now. So when everyone don't give, guess what? I'm going to make that van payment. Amen. And if that means I got to go without, I got to go without this. I'm not going to complain. I'm not saying this so some of you will start handing me free handouts. That's not what I'm looking for. You know that. But I'm going to maintain my responsibilities and hold this position that God has given me to the best of my ability. I'm going to reach out for dreams and goals. Amen. I'm reaching for God-sized dreams. Amen. I'm reaching for God-sized dreams. Big things. Can't you see every big thing that God has given this church? Everything ought to be a testimony of faith for you. That if God gave it to them, then surely he can give it unto me. 
And so now I'm praying for things that I never thought I'd pray for. I'm seeking God for things I never thought I'd sought for. Amen. I'm seeking to grow and, amen, and teach you great revelation and knowledge. Amen. Because I don't want to just stay where I'm at. I want to grow. And some of you aren't growing. You're staying where you're at. Amen. And the spirit of manipulation, if it gets involved in your life, you'll stay right where you're at. And some of those will even lose their position and fall out of church. Somebody come to the piano. I don't need a bass player. I don't need a guitar player. I don't need a drummer. I just need someone to come to the piano. I don't need, you don't even got to come to the altar if you don't want to. But I'm sending a warning out from the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. He gave me this warning. I never saw this. I've never preached this in my entire life. Amen. And then when I began to pray about it and study about it, amen, the Lord spoke to me and said, some are being manipulated. And it's hindering your growth and your change. You're not who you once were. You're not who you used to be. Something's different about you. You're acting funny. And it's like when I come around, you're trying to skip around me. Amen. Because you don't want me to sense or know anything. Well, you know who you are when you're faithful. This shouldn't bother you one bit. I refuse. I refuse. To let a spirit of manipulation come in here and try to steal people away Amen. by enticement, by stuff. You can't take it to heaven with you anyways. By things. You think things run me? Things don't control me? I've lost it all. That's why Paul said, I've learned how to be abased and how to abound. And I've also learned how to be content with whatsoever state I find myself in. I shout no matter what. Worship no matter what. Come on, you know who you are. You pray no matter what. You give no matter what. Amen. They cut the light off, they cut it off. Amen. I've been in the dark before. Amen. They cut my cell phone off, cut it off. I've been without communication before. Amen. I've been without gas before. So what? Won't be the first, may not be the last. But I'm still going to love God. I'm still going to be faithful unto the one that saved my soul. And that loved me with real love. With real unconditional love. And took me as I was. With all my mess ups. With all my hang ups with all my errors he still took me in and if we're not careful and you become somebody that's bitter and full of complaints yourself that spirit of manipulation has already tried to get a hold of you too because instead of seeing positive all you're seeing is faults yourself faults in this one faults in that one well what about this and woe is me woe is me woe is me as if you're the only one that does something in this church Everybody's got a part to play. Everybody's got a position to work. Everybody's got a mind that they need to focus on. Amen. Everybody's got something. Everybody's got a a, a mistake they're trying to fix. Everybody's got a family member they're trying to save. Sure. Amen. Do all of that. Amen. But keep God first. And don't let people push themselves in your lives that don't sincerely love you. I told the Lord, Lord. I'll follow you, but you got to go bury my dad. He said, let the dead bury the dead. You follow me. Another one, he said, Lord, he said, I'll follow you. He said, but what do I got to do? He said, go sell all that you have and give it to the poor and follow me. Amen. But that man turned away because he had great possessions. He didn't want to give up none of his stuff. And the Pharisees came to him and said, Lord, what do we got to do to follow you? And then he rebuked them. He rebuked them and told them, why don't you go home and learn what that means and then come back and talk to me later. That's what he said in the scripture. He said, why don't you go home and learn what that means first. Hi, Lord. I wonder what somebody would say if I said that to him. Pastor, this and this ain't in the scripture, so you shouldn't teach that. You know what etymology is? No. Well, why don't you go home and learn what that means before you come ask me questions. And that's what Jesus said. <laughs> Are you being deceived? Are you being mocked? Are you, are you being enticed by a spirit of manipulation? Amen. Are they trying to just, amen, get gain and get advantage off of you? Amen. Because they, they call it love. So they can get mad and throw it in your face later. That ain't love. I'm going to take it a step further. 
I don't care if they have been baptized in Jesus' name. So was Simon. So was Simon. He was baptized in Jesus' name, and Peter rebuked him. He said, your money perish with you. He said, and I pray you would repent, amen, that the bitterness of your spirit and the iniquity of your heart will not cause you to perish. And instead of repenting and instead of praying, you know what Simon told him? He said, well, then can you do it for me? Ask Peter to pray for him then because he couldn't do it himself. Are you being enticed? Are you being manipulated? Are you, on, are you getting bitter and only seeing faults? I'm not trying to attack anybody here. I'm trying to warn you that this thing is trying to get a hold of somebody in the church. God wouldn't have gave me this if it wasn't so. His altars are open. I'm done. Pray, do whatever you feel led to do. Whatever your pleasure is. Are you stuck in so-called love? Love is at its best when it's put to the test. I don't care about who it's from. They won't change with you. I'm going to tell I'm going to say something right now. now. I've never said this across the pulpit, but I'm going to say it right now. If they're not going to change and all they're going to do is hinder your growth, then walk away. Walk away. Walk away. If it's real, they'll follow you. If it's real, they'll follow you. But if not, you better learn to cut your losses. Because sometimes, amen, sometimes he is the Lord that giveth and he is the Lord that taketh away. I've seen God remove people out of their lives because they couldn't do it themselves. Where are you at? Where are you at with God? Somebody's manipulating you. Somebody's trying to entice you. Don't fall into the trap. They're doing it with sorceries, with words of wisdom that sound so good. Oh, it sounds so right. Come on, we've got people in the altar. Pray, pray, get a hold of the Lord. Pray, get a hold of the Lord. Come on.